Hi everyone, uh, Chaplain Dell here again tonight, uh, back from the field, back from my campsite, <clears throat> which the Lord has very graciously blessed me with, um, and uh, uh, having some peace out in the woods, out around the water, and the mosquitoes and that, uh, <laughs> to uh, fellowship in Him, to find peace and quiet with Him, and uh, I find that um, Myself, I um, I really, at this stage of my life, find a lot more peace out in God's church, the nature, than going to that shack down the road that they call church, where many of the brethren inside really don't belong to him. So how can you have an assembly of the brethren, a fellowship, if you don't have fellows? Well... This is church system. Now, I've been accused of people within the church system because the church system, quite frankly, to how I see things now, has become their God. This is what they worship. This is what they think you're to do in being a good Christian and following after the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't miss church. We go to the services. We do the Bible studies. We have prayer meetings. You know, uh... Past he writes sermons, all these kind of things. And you all know what I'm talking about if, if you've been uh, a part of any type of church function. But these are things that are things of the world that are things that are visible of the world, the visible church, if you will. But what I've chosen to try and follow, which is a lot more difficult, is Christ within me, which is really the true church and there's a heck of a difference I'm learning <clears throat> now like I said I came back from the field uh, communing with my Lord in nature where I'm not where I can be one-on-one -on -one, hold the head of the Lord listen to the Lord have the Lord follow, uh, give me direction and try my level best to listen and follow him now the interesting thing is that churchmen have accused me of being spiritually proud. I'm spiritually, I'm prideful because from their perspective, they're the ones that are following the Lord correctly, where I am not. Um, so look, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And if any man would follow after me, let him deny himself, you know, and pick up his cross and follow me. And this means in every capacity necessary apart from the world. So in doing this, <clears throat> uh, I've experienced really two things. I have a Jewish friend of mine uh, that I've spoken with, and I told him, you know, if you had a near-death experience like I had, or you had seen things like I had in the city, uh, and deliverance, and you had uh, uh, experienced a, a miraculous healing in your life, different things where the actual Lord Jesus Christ did touch your life. Wouldn't you want to share that with people? Wouldn't you in honesty say, hey, listen, this is exciting. Guess what happened to me? And, and share with people the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's what I want to do. But I'm finding out that the biggest um, blockade, the biggest hampering of me doing this is systematic theology, church systems, church men, theologians, uh, religious people, or they used to be called scribes back in the Old Testament time, which is in Matthew 8, I believe it's 18 through 22, where the scribe wanted to follow Christ. But Jesus told him, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. You know, the birds have their nests, the foxes have their holes, but the bird, Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And that's because he would follow the Father within him. Now, churchmen would say, well, of course, because he was the only church at the time. He was the only one that, that could follow uh, God in that matter. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no, because... He had disciples, so they were part of the early church before the day of Pentecost. 
He had uh, John the Baptist, who incidentally his father uh, was a chief priest in the temple at the time. Here the guy's out in the field eating bugs and honey. You know, while locusts and honey and wearing camel hair probably stuck to high heaven, they'd probably be ashamed to have him in the church. And I'm sure they would have called him spiritually proud. But yet the Bible said he was the greatest of all the apostles, I mean, of all the prophets, of all the prophets um, up to the time of Christ. So <clears throat> it's just ironic to me that uh, churchmen would call me spiritual spiritually proud for attempting to follow and share uh, the Lord Jesus Christ with others in my life. And the only reason I can see that they would do this is because they don't understand. They don't hear him, my sheep hear my voice, like they should be able to. Otherwise, they could discern whose was who, who is his and who is not his, as the Bible instructs us to do. But they don't. They'd rather accuse the brethren from because they're spiritually dead. They don't hear him. Because if they heard him and they listened to my videos, they would recognize that all I'm trying to do is share with others Christ and follow him. But because they think they're in a superior position because they want to feel in their sinful backside preservation society you know, fire insurance, church down the street, that they're following Jesus, right? They can't accept the fact that maybe I am because that means they're in trouble. That means they're in trouble. If they're not following the Lord within them, uh, which is what Jesus says to do, that's why, uh, again, in Matthew 8, Christ says to his disciple, let the dead bury their own dead. He, he wanted something of the world, to have some comfort in the world, to have some position in the world before he would follow the Lord. And Jesus said, no, let the dead bury their own dead. In other words, <clears throat> anything that detracts from you hearing the Lord in and of yourself, in your heart, in your spirit, in your conscience. Now, mind you, it will always be biblical, okay, in nature because the Bible is God's word. And the Bible is God's nature. But if you truly know him, you'll have the same abilities as people in the scripture did. And if you truly know him and follow him, you'll be persecuted like they were. People think the apostle Peter, uh, you know, oh, if I lived in that day, I'd be like Peter. Or, oh, if I lived in that day, I'd have been a disciple of Paul too. Nonsense. Nonsense. Because one of the... One of the uh, one of the things a lot of people don't realize about the apostles, they were all rejected. Um, I think it was, no, St. Andrew was, if I'm not mistaken, was crucified sideways in Scotland on a cross. Many of them were put to death uh, of the early apostles. Um, Paul was stoned and resurrected. Um, he was rejected of men, and even he was studied. That's why he says, well, by boats in the world, I was a Benjamite Jew, but but ah, but ah, but ah, but I don't boast in that. I simply try to follow Christ. And he says to try to follow people, not to follow him, but to follow Christ as he follows Christ, or follow, follow him as he follows Christ. And that's all I'm trying to do. And people think I'm spiritually proud is because it's the sword. It's the sword, and it's... um. It's sticking them in the ass. They're going, wow, I can't do that. And since I can't be wrong, since I'm a good Christian and I know I'm going to heaven and I'm an elder or I'm a pastor or I'm whatever in the church, this guy just, well, he's just spiritually proud. Well, I mean, who does he think he is saying that uh, this uno to uno thing? Was he saying he can follow God better than I can? Oh, nonsense. How could this be? I'm a leader in the church. I'll tell you why. Because if you're following any man-made denomination, any man at all, and I'm not talking about simply having fellowship with people who know the Lord Jesus Christ, such as I do, they're the brethren and they support each other and they talk about the Lord in their lives. I'm not talking about that. Then they're, uh, 
They don't know how to follow Christ because they don't have ears to hear and they don't have eyes to see. That's that's what the truth is. And, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're making them uncomfortable because that's their fire insurance. So it's much easier to say, well, he's just spiritually proud than to recognize maybe you have something that they don't have. And the fact that they can't see it. They can't see it because they're blind to it. They don't hear his voice. You know, uh, like I've said before in one of my other videos, the great Dr. R.C. Sproul says, this is not the norm. It's not the norm of how God deals with people. <laughs> yeah, in the world, he's absolutely right. It's not the norm how God deals with people. God works through situation and events. Well, he does that for the whole friggin' world. So why does he say, my sheep hear my voice? And why does, the, why does the scriptures command us to know of what spirit people are of? Who is your brother and who is not? Why does the scripture tell us not to cast our pearls before swine, where they turn and they trample upon us? Because a true follower of Jesus Christ has to know who his brethren are, for real. And it used to be at the point of death, and in some places of the world it still is. So these churchmen are very foolish when... When somebody is expounding the truth of God, the spiritual things that they don't have, and they automatically assume, just like scientists do in this world, that they have the truth and this guy's a wacko. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Because man, in and of himself, natural man, the natural mind, his pride won't allow him to admit that maybe there's something out there that's beyond him. Maybe you can have a personal, living, moving relationship in the Lord Jesus Christ. <gasps> a scientist wouldn't agree with that. A theologian couldn't agree with that. Come on. That would go against the establishment, against the established church, against the established science. It would go against everything. But yet Jesus said, I came to bring a sword to divide mother, father, sister, brother, husband from wife. What was he talking about? He was talking about being able to hear him and speak the truth of God. Now, it's very funny because I have a Jewish friend of mine. And um, I've always been known as an honest guy. Uh, I, I try not to, uh, to rip people off. I try not to BS people. I just try to do the best that I can, despite my lack of education, uh, to convey what I've experienced in my life. Kind of like the razor's edge, you know. Maybe the razor's, razor's edge. I've read and read and read. I've studied, 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 tried to find the meaning of life. And I found the meaning of life is following the Lord Jesus Christ within you if you have his spirit. So anybody that says that I'm spiritually proud because I don't want to uh, identify with a particular denomination or a particular um, doctrine or a particular um, systematic theology well, they're up the creek. They're the ones that are so proud they can't even see they don't know Christ. Because they did know him, they couldn't say the things they say. But from their dichotomy, that's what I look like. Yeah, this guy's spiritually proud. He thinks he's got something other people don't have. You know what? I'm 52 years old now, soon to be 53, and I'm just starting to realize this. And actually, I'm a very unconfident person. I, I can't believe that these other individuals out there who claim to be Christian all this all their lives don't have any witness of the Spirit within them. They can't walk away from their church system because they have nothing to follow with inside of them. They don't hear the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's why they can't leave their church system, their systematic theology, their fire insurance, because they, they can't hear them. If they could hear them, and if they were listening to him, they would follow him instead of their particular denomination or whatever. I'm sorry, God's used the church for hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years. But it's the, t it's the time in human history, I believe, that uh, the Lord, the true church, which is the body of believers, the people that believe in him, are having to learn to hear and walk as men, spiritual men and women. And... Um, so there's going to be a sharp contrast, the sword, a rift between churchmen 
and people who truly hear and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what's really happening. So perhaps from their standpoint, from a religious person's standpoint, they see me as being spiritually proud because again, they think that they have Christ. We all have Christ in the same way. So therefore he must just be a little spiritually proud. But what I'm discovering to my chagrin, to my horror, is that most people don't have him or don't follow him. They're broad rotors or they had something of the Lord and they turned their back on Christ and now they follow church. That's why it says, you know, if any man should come after me, let him deny himself. Let him deny all these things, take up his cross and follow me. That's why it says narrow is the way because it costs you if you, you know, Oida, if you listen to that, that knowing, that still small voice within you, the voice of the Lord leading you. Uh, two things, there's, there's power in that because you can hear the Lord and know Jesus Christ and walk in him in and of yourselves. You don't need pastor or some guy with a theological degree to show you how to do it. Really what you need is fellowship. And the reason you have so little fellowship is because there's so few of us around. Jesus said, many will come to me in that day saying, didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we do healing? Didn't we do all the things in that, in that day? And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. He never knew them. He never had a personal relationship. They never heard his voice. They never walked with him. It's talking about the church. That's what it's talking about. The people who claim his name but don't know him. And it has nothing to do with your theological prowess or whatever, your position in the world, has to do with you simply following the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're honest with yourself, you know that's what it means. Look at Fox's Book of Martyrs. Look at anything through church history. You know that's what it means. So, damn it, don't call me spiritually proud because I've been crushed. God has crushed me, allowing me to get to this point to realize that this was a broad road that I was heading down and I wasn't heading down the narrow path of following Christ. And the problem is you churchmen can't admit it. It costs you too much. Yeah. But, you know, you don't have ears to see. You don't have ears to hear and eyes to see. Excuse me. I'm ADHD. And, uh, you know, like Jesus said to Matthew, I think it was 23. Why is it you can't hear what I'm saying? Why is it you can't see what I'm saying? Because they don't have the spirit of God. That's why the Lord spoke in parables to people. And I'm sorry, churchmen, but if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't truly follow him, what are you following? Because it ain't Christ. So call me spiritual and proud, if you will. But uh, just realize, uh, I mean, the whole Bible speaks of the last to be first, the first to be last. And as like my Jewish friend says, Sure, why wouldn't you share with people? You're an honest guy. You want to share your experiences. And isn't it funny how I'm attacked? All right, well, I ran this video over a little bit tonight, but uh, I wanted to um, try to expound some uh, some more truths that I'm seeing and, uh, and the rejection you can expect within the church if you speak out against them. Yeah. Just like in the days of the disciples. Hmm. Same power, folks. Same spirit. We can know him and we can follow him. And I encourage anybody who knows what I'm talking about to continue to make time alone with the Lord and to follow his leading and don't get tripped up by the snares and foot wires uh, the enemy lays for us. Uh, the deceptions, the, um, what they call those things in World War II, the, um, uh, daggone it, can't remember the word, you know, the, the mock-up tanks, the mock-up, things that were mock-ups, they looked like something, but they really weren't anything. Well, that's, that's a lot of times the church and church people, they look like something, but they're not the true deal. And that's the kind of spiritual battlefield we're in. All right. Bless you, brethren. Coming up on 20 minutes here.
turn the sign off. I hope this doesn't slur. Bye.